Hello there and welcome to CNR Extra, coming to you live from my studios at number 5 Ola Hansen Lane, Tessano, Afra. My name is Philip Minkati, coming up. Former Chief Justice Sophia Kufu, uh, unfazed by negative criticisms as she joined pensioner bondholders again on Tuesday. Stones may break my bones, but uh, blah blah will not hurt me. No, an insult, insult, insult is the weapon of the pin brain. 18 people picked by the police following disagreement over accommodation issues between students and authorities on the University of Ghana campus on Tuesday. The dialogue. We are not getting responses. People are sleeping outside. Do we have to lose a student life before we act? We are jealously protecting human life and property, and we want to jealously protect or create the environment that will be congenial for education, teaching, and learning. And National Democratic Congress Youth Organizer for Swami Constituency granted bill by the Asoka Circuit Court in the Ashanti region. Our brother Kwampa Razak has been granted bill. The court has ordered that the, the prosecution serve us with their disclosures so that we can start the trial. Also, Ghana Post to offer discounts to the public from February 14 to the end of the month as the country celebrates the World Chocolate Day. That Ghana Post launched last year, it's a period that we use to spread love. We call it spreading love or carrying love to its destination. CNR Express live on CCTV on the show. We bring you updates of all the stories making rounds in the uh, media space and also the stories that made it to the city newsroom. You can join us with your comments, suggestions, and um, suggestions as well on our WhatsApp line 0204 447033. Hansen Ajiman, you're welcome to the show today. Thank you, my brother. How did um, did you buy chocolate? The, the, of of course, the, chocolate we have, we have vendors, the vendors were complaining that uh, they are not recording a lot of sales. They low, low the, petrol. The, there's a lot we need to do. You know, I know that a lot of people bought things on February 14, but we need to do a lot for people to buy chocolate. But how did you celebrate yours? I celebrated mine well. We will talk about <laughs> it. But first, let's go to the finance <laughs> ministry because the finance minister Ken Oforiata is addressing. Um, uh, the pensioner bondholders uh, as we went there to pick it today. Let's bring you live feed of what is happening there as of now. So if you're watching City TV now, the minister is done. He is basically asking the pensioners to explain the reasons why they have gathered here because according to him, he has assured them on he has assured them on paper that their bonds all government bonds including theirs will be paid and while he when he finished talking some people from the arise ghana tried to interject and the minister trust the minister and there's been sort of confusion some chaos the minister has decided to leave uh, excuse me
furious at the behavior of Oliver um, because he is the reason why the minister has left. Um, he is asking for the Fix the Country and Arise Ghana members to calm down. The minister and his deputy, Abna Ose Asare, are currently heading into an office together with some So what you currently see in your shot, the minister and his, his group from the finance ministry have now entered the office and now they are asking for leadership of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum to join them in the, and have a discussion. So if you just joined in, the Pensioner Bondholders Forum were having their picketing just as they've been having at the Finance Ministry. They got um, some support from Arise Ghana and the Fix the Country. One of the conveners for Fix the Country is Oliver Baka Vomawa. The Minister of Finance heard of their presence this morning and decided to come and have a conversation with the pensioners. So while he was speaking, Oliver interjected and said that Ghanaians do not trust the minister. That quite infuriated the minister and he left the scene. So right now what you see in your shot is a, me a meeting that's been convened. What you see behind me now is that the, the finance ministry is trying to convene a meeting between the minister himself, um, his deputy, Abnao Seasari, and leadership of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum. That picketing has come to a halt. It was supposed to end at 11 a.m. anyway. Uh, the minister was addressing the picketing, and there was some interjection. infuriated the minister and he chose to leave the scene. They have now entered this office, um, still on the premises of the finance ministry. exactly what was going on at the folk, um, in front of the ministry because according to him the pensioner bondholders who have self-exempt from the domestic debt exchange program he has written on paper in that press release that all government bonds will be honored when they are due and that includes those that belong to the pensioner bondholders and he has given his word and he has given that assurance so he wanted to understand the circumstances that, that has led to them being there. So, so there was supposed to be a response from the convener for the pensioner bondholders, Dr. Edu Ananenji. While he tried to do that, Oliver Bakavomo, who is a convener for the Fix the Country movement, interjected and he said that the finance minister cannot be trusted. And that phrase is what infuriated the minister. And then he left the scene. And so that is why he has come to this office um, with his deputy, Abna Oseasari, and Ooh. some of the leadership of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum have joined him in that meeting. We know, we know the picketing has been members of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum start to today, which is day eight. Uh, what exactly uh, is, has accounted the need for 
Arise Ghana and also Fix the Country members to be there today. Have they told you the reason why they are there today to also picket at the finance ministry? for any type of protest, whether be it against government or any other group, to stand against authority. So once he heard that the pensioners were picketing, he thought that it was important that he and his group members come and give their support. Um, on Friday and yesterday, um, former Chief Justice Sophia Kufu, who isn't a member of the group, also joined to give their support. The pensioner bondholders, if you speak to Dr. Eduanani, had even been calling for other people in society to come and support them. So this morning when they came, he was happy about it. I'm sure until this very incident that happened, it was a good thing for him, for them to have joined. I don't know if he, if he would say same after the incident that just happened. So with what is happening now, are we still seeing the same number uh, the individuals who came there yesterday, that is the pensioner bondholders, are, still, they, are, still, are they still having the same number they had as of yesterday when they came there to pick it? Just about the same number of about 25 people that came. The difference was that they had um, support from these two groups, the uh, Fix the Country and Arise Ghana. Um, groups who just came to solidarize with the pensioner bondholders. The numbers had not exponentially increased. Even the Fix the Country and Arise Ghana were just about 10 people. Um, I could count about 10 of them who just came. Um, I saw Mr. Bernard Mona, um, I saw Rex Omar, and Oliver himself, who had come here this morning to solidarize and give support to the pensioners. Tell us about the individuals who have entered into the meeting. Aside, we know that the finance minister is there, and the deputy finance minister is there, Oliver is also there. Is it just the leadership or the entire membership uh, have been allowed to enter into this meeting with the finance ministry? Leaders, just... Also, some of the members, mm. membership, um, not all of them actually. So they are numbering about 25, 30. Um, it's a small room. Not all of them can f fit into that room. So the leadership and some of the members of the pension fix the country and arise Ghana um, people have not been allowed into that meeting. Okay, th uh, Charles. Thank you so much for your time and keep updating us as to what happens at the finance ministry. That is my colleague, Charles Ouzukumi, with the City Newsroom, and he's stationed at the finance ministry to bring us up to speed as concerned to what is happening there so far as the pensioner bondholders are picketing, asking the finance ministry and government to explicitly state to them that they've been exempted from the debt exchange program. We will bring you updates on that conversation. Hansi, what do you make about it? Because it looks like uh, as the days go by, we are getting a lot more people joining the picketing and in more influential people are also joining uh, the demand by the pensioner bondholders to ask for exemption from the debt exchange program. Well, to contextualize this, somewhere last week, uh, Oliver Bakavoma posted on the pensioner bondholders to protest mm. in, in helping them uh, imp uh, impress upon government to exclude them from this debt action program. So essentially what we are seeing is he honoring the, his part of the bargain it, as seeing that the protest has gone on continuously for eight days mm. uh, with these pensioner bondholders not missing any day. And if you look at it from the point of view from the pensioner bondholders, you may say that it is a good one for them because these are senior citizens not with that level of energy. And if you, if you studied the, the protest or the picketing at the finance ministry, 
on the first day there were quite a number of people but when the former chief justice came in the following day there was that momentum like there was a morale she, yes she boosted their morale. yes and then when she went yesterday there was that momentum mm -hmm. and of course it's a it's, it's a good cause if or nothing at all for them it's a very good cause that they are pushing mm -hmm. and so any kind of support that they will get to be able to make this uh, successful will be welcomed. Mm. As to whether or not the interactions or the engagement that went on between Oliver Baka Vomo and the finance minister as uh, reported by uh, Charles Osukumi, I can't pass any value judgment on that. But of course, we know Oliver Baka Vomo We course. know his, his style to protest and his right within his 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 his, his, his constitutional rights to tell who and who he trusts and who and who he doesn't, doesn't trust. trust. I mean, uh, and the finance minister is struggling, and and from what and, and from what uh, Charles, Charles yeah. reported, the finance minister is struggling to understand why they are still protesting. When is restated in the? Uh, press statement, but they are also saying that it wasn't stated, uh, wasn't they weren't told officially by a letter because they have presented several letters to the finance ministry asking that government officially communicates to them that they've been exempted. So the finance minister is, is he's not even told them that they've been exempted. He's told them that it is voluntary, mm. and so if it is voluntary, I've assured you that when it is time for me to pay you, I will pay you. And I think that that is where the conversation has come to this time. We've moved quite a, 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 a journey, and now we've gotten to a point where we need to look at whether or not a total exemption coming in from the government, and you voluntarily de deciding not to participate, are these two the same? Mm. These two on face value are the same in the sense that if government is exempting you, you are getting your money according to the previous terms you have as far as your bond is concerned. If you are voluntarily deciding not to participate, with. But the difference here is that, you see, when you get exemption from government, mm. at a time when you know government is struggling, at a time when you know that government owes certain people like contractors and have not paid, if government gives you that assurance that we are exempting you, like the way they did to the labor unions labor, yeah. and said your pension funds are, are exempted, you have that strong assurance that if for nothing at all, government will work around with us in mind and make sure that our money will be given. Now, when you voluntarily exempt yourself, when government has on several occasions warned that if you exempt yourself, there will be just a number of bonds that will be tradable. And some fearing that government may even opt to default. And when you've heard arguments that we have to necessarily do this debt exchange so that we don't have those debt defaults and it's the best even for your bonds. Government uh, communication spokespersons have argued that this debt exchange is your best bet because if you don't do this, what we will have is a default. Mm. You don't fall to the people when they fear that you might default. And when there's a debt default, you know what that means? That these pensioner bondholders who have served this country very well, who do not have the luxury of getting monthly salaries yeah. and are depending on what they've saved, we now have to look for money elsewhere, go to court. And we know our court process. Of course. It might take a very long time. Go to court to compel this same government to give them the money that they are supposed to give of them. Of course, on that court note. bondholders were the picketed yesterday and she has indicated that she will take legal action against the finance ministry if they fail to respond to the several letters they've given to the finance ministry let's bring you that insight the former chief justice sophia kufu says she is unfazed 
by negative criticisms as he joined pensioner bondholders again today uh, to demand a complete exemption from the domestic debt exchange program. Justice Sophia Kufo received backlash from the general public as well as from Gabri Oche Dakon, a leading member of the New Patriotic Party, for joining the protest last Friday. Addressing journalists today, she indicated she will personally go to court if the finance ministry fails to respond to a letter issued by a pensioner bond. This morning, the Finance Ministry released a press statement. In that press statement, it announced that government had attained the 80% of eligible bonds needed for a successful domestic debt exchange. Also in that press statement, it assured individual bondholders, especially pensioner bondholders, that their coupon payments and principles will be honored when they are due. So one would have thought that this statement and assurance would make the pensioner bondholders who have been picketing at the finance ministry since February 6 to stop coming here to the finance ministry. But no, they have returned this morning and they are continuing with their picketing. And they also have a special guest, a former Chief Justice, Sophia Akufu, who joined the picketing last Friday. She's coming again today. But for what exactly? What exactly are the pensioner bondholders asking of the finance ministry, even after all these assurances? They just simply want to stand by the original bond that they have with the government. And you know, the, the word bond. bond. Yes. And, 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 and when a government's bond uh, can be tossed up and down uh, the, the tides like that, flip flop. That's a serious thing. For me, my problem with this whole thing is the, is the destruction of the image of this nation and something that is being done which will last for generations. It took a long time before normal Ghanaians would even buy anything into anything that is government because there was always the suspicion, huh, tomorrow you don't know what will happen. Now they are reintroducing that all that uh, needs to be done and um, doctor was talking about uh, the uh, the a letter simple letter that was written by the association to the minister exempt us from your program i think that's the that's the gist i always like to distill things to their lowest common denominator Exempt us, we are pensioners. Up to now, I've seen a copy of the letter. It's dated 7th January. According to Doctor, it was delivered on 10th January. Up to now, there's not even a, a note. I'm not even saying a letter. A note of acknowledgement. And yet, a few days ago, similar letters that had been written to to, to, to the minister have been responded to, whereby he has categorically exempted other groups. Why? And you know, when I cannot fathom the reason for something being done in a particular way, especially when it's been done for others, but it's not being done for others, I start getting suspicious. I've grown to be to the age where I've seen it all. And therefore, I easily become suspicious. Paper talks. Empty talk flies with the wind. Yes. So, a press release. So, former that she is supporting the pensioner bondholders to that government who heed to their cause. Hansen, briefly, do you think that uh, they are call from the ministry or from government will be heeded to and is, does it look like they are going to pick it for a very long time before whatever they are demanding for is being given to them they showed resilience mm. as to whether government will agree is another thing but i think that they've done the cost benefit analysis mm. 
and they know that an exemption that puts a greater responsibility on government is better for them than a voluntary non-participation which say that we told you so mm -hmm. that cautiously that we create a system that puts our senior citizens in such a tight corner. Mm -hmm. Never ever should we do that. That the Chief Justice, a former Chief Justice will have to come. Um, she was a fourth in line. Imagine a former president having the need to come and to come and uh, protest. Okay. And then you have party members literally put her on the slave board for anybody to talk against that person. <laughs> I mean, that is how we should see it. It is very unacceptable. And I think that the president should, should step in at mm -hmm. this point. If for nothing at all, the courtesy that we give to people of high pedigree who have served our country... That same should be given to them. Should be given to them. And it's not that I'm taking out the uh, former chief justice of uh, Kufu and saying that because... elsewhere there are special programs for senior citizens mm. we don't have that when these people have saved enough so that at least they can live a very moderate life exactly. and not be dependent on society mm -hmm. we want to deny them of their own hard work so there's a topic or a very interesting issue and as usual we will keep you updated as to what happens at uh, the finance ministry, our uh, colleague uh, Charles Ousukumi is stationed there, and certainly we will keep you updated. You are still watching CNR Extra here or on CCTV. Still to come. National Democratic Congress Youth Organizer for Swami Constituency granted bail by the Asokwa Circuit Court in the Ashanti region. Stay with us. We'll be back with more stories. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near. Welcome back. This is CNR Extra on City TV. My name is Philip Nilati. I'm here with Hansen Ajiman. You can join us as well with your comments, submissions, and thoughts via WhatsApp line 0204-447033. Let's bring you some more stories. And 18 persons have been arrested for causing disturbances at the University of Ghana campus following confusion between former residents for Commonwealth Hall and the police. So let's bring you that insight. There was heavy security presence at the forecourt of the Commonwealth Hall at the University of Ghana following a misunderstanding between the police and agreed right to make an entry into the hall. Now, after stiff resistance from the police, the students claim they have secured an interlocutory injunction 
and must be made to reside in the hall. The police say 18 persons have been arrested. City News' Kennedy Chumasi has more in the following report. Read. With some Commonwealth Hall students and the management of the University of Ghana for over a month, following the latter's new residential policy announced on October 26, 2022, the policy stops a continuing students from occupying its two traditional halls, that is, the Commonwealth and Mensa Saba halls. According to management, the move is to serve as a punitive measure after clashes between some students of the two halls led to the destruction of a bus of Mensa Saba Hall. However, the decision has continuously been met with fierce opposition from the students with the argument that they have nowhere to seek accommodation since other hostels require twice the amount they used to pay at the traditional halls. The students claim the move is a ploy by management to break the activism front of students and disintegrate the affiliation with the traditional halls. In view of this, the students filed a suit against the university. On January 6, an Accra High Court placed an interlocutory injunction on the residential policy decision by the University of Ghana. The court, in its ruling on the matter, said the status quo must be maintained as it 2022. But students lament the university has by the court's order. This led to a scuffle between the police and the aggrieved students as they tried to make an entry into the hall. Since last week, we've started having concerns on the fact that management that drove residents of Commonwealth Hall as of 26 October 2022, they are sucking them from these UJ hostels because the students are failing to make these huge payments for accommodation. This issue was sent to the court, the Accra High Court. And last week on Thursday, 9th of February, the court ordered the school management to reinstate the Commonwealth Hall boys that were driven out of the hall. So it's been today is the feed day that um, students are agitating that nothing has been said about it. And students have been sat from their rooms at the Eugene hostels. Where do they expect them to sleep? I know of females who are keeping their staff in kitchens. People are not batting for That's no. We've been taken out of our rooms. So give us rooms as the court has ordered. Because if you are sucking out us from here, then it means that probably you've made arrangements for this end so that you receive the students. People are coming from Western region, Eastern region, Ashanti, Ashanti region. What do they expect them to do? They have no relatives here. Management admitting 17,000 first year students and only giving accommodation to 6,000. 11,000 have been thrown into the system. Desperation. People are being scammed. They are being sacked at night. What do they want them to do? Due to the heavy security presence on the campus, the police stopped the students from entering the hall. I'm sure you heard about the demonstration, the Yabemu demonstration that happened uh, some days ago, uh, where students must do a passport to independence and submit a petition. This is dialogue. We are not getting responses. People are sleeping outside. Do we have to lose a student life before we act? And when we act, when students act, you come to arrest them. This is injustice. We are aware school is doing businesses. We are building shopping malls at the expense of hostels. We are aware. So why should you stress us as students? Today I'm very sad. It is if government does not step in to hear the plights of students. Look at accommodation. People are paying 10,000, 9,000, 8,000 for protocol before they are giving legal beds to sleep on. People are in rooms. They've been taken out of systems. Different students have been placed in the Forced to sleep in lecture halls, making the academic life very stressful. It's very stressful because combining where I'm sleeping at, I have a class this morning and looking 
I, I couldn't sleep this this evening because there were a whole lot of people there and and they were studying and all that and I have to I have to hang around on campus so this morning so I couldn't I, I couldn't go to lectures the whole of today and 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 I, I know for sure that they've, they've told us to come back and we came there and we are being brutalized by police and arrested and all that so right now we are very stranded on campus very very stranded and we don't know what to do I'm in level 300 now and 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 it's sad it's very sad how I'm living my academic life here it's so 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 sad and no one is coming to address us. No one is like no one cares about us. So that's my problem. It's very difficult for me now as a student of the University of Ghana. But in an interview with City News, a member of the academic communication team of the university, Professor Ransford Jampo, described the attitude of the students as lawless and urged them to use the appropriate channels to meet their grievances since the matter is still in court. Some group feel they don't like the decision that has been taken. And so they've taken the university to court before the substance of the matter is heard. Those who have been injuncted from assessing or making use of their right to file for stay of execution and to appeal against the injunction. Okay, so it is lawless for anybody to say that um, a court has given an injunction and so we are... Yes, a court granted an injunction. The university, knowing its facts and knowing that it has a solid case, when has gone out of its, 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 its way to ap apply for a, um, a stay of uh, execution and then is appealing against the injunction. And so it is act of lawlessness for anybody to say that regardless of what the university is doing, um, we want to take the law into our own hands and then um, enforce it. If anybody thinks that the university is running afoul of the rule, you should go to court once again and cite them, the management and authorities for contempt. I think that's how things are done. You don't take the law into your own hands and say you want to enforce it. It will not work. And so we work with the security agencies to ensure that those who are trying to disturb the peace are brought to book. And I appeal to parents. Professor Jampo further indicated that students who have been arrested by the police will be subjected to their discipline. jealously protecting human life and property and we want to jealously protect or create the environment that will be congenial for education teaching and learning and so we wouldn't allow anybody to take the laws of the of, of the land and our own laws into their own hands and to want to cause disturbances it will not happen and we get the specific details, we subject them um, through our own internal disciplinary process and then see if they're able to acquit and discharge themselves, that's, that's it. But I'm calling on parents that some do not know that their words are being used to disturb our peace. But the university will not sit down for a few people to disturb its peace. There is a case pending before courts. We are going legally and making use of the courts. Okay. And so if people, if somebody feels that a court has granted an injunction and the university is not respected, um, respecting that injunction, you go to that same court and cite the university authorities for contempt. That is law. That's how, what the law prescribes. It's not lawlessness. And if you go on this tangent of trying to be lawless, then you tend to vindicate the, the reasons why some of these tough decisions have been taken you know, by the university. Meanwhile, the police in a statement says it has arrested 18 people for disturbances on the University of Ghana campus. The 18 suspects were together with about 200 others believed to be former members of the Commonwealth Hall of the University. Management of the University of Ghana uh, has indicated that decision there has been a court issues on all these things and we are back here again Hansen you are from that institution what is happening there <laughs> my beloved University of yes, Ghana your alma mater is, is a fix <laughs> uh, it will be over but I think that both
their rights as they, they, they enjoy under the Constitution. Constitution guarantees our right to education, our right, our liberties, mm -hmm. and any time you think that those rights have been trampled upon, there are appropriate measures that you can go to for redress. And that's why, to an extent, I may want to caution the students of the former student, uh, resident of Commonwealth Hall that you've seen it in all that the right way for you. Because within the university, there are appropriate um, disciplinary committees, uh, arbitration committees, that and even a residential board that could have equally addressed these issues. But in their own wisdom, they believed that going to the court was the right way to go. So my point is very simple. Why go to the court, get an interlocutory injunction, mm -hmm. hoping that the court will grant you your ultimate prayer or pleadings that you've made to the court, only for you to go and attempt using an unlawful means of what the court has given to you. The court has been given certain powers, and it has all the power it needs to act. It does not need anybody to act on its behalf. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just as uh, Professor Rans, for example, example, said, if you think the court is, 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 is not obeying the directions of the, of the, the investor is not obeying the directions of the court, all you have to go back is to go back to the same court. I'm trying to play the devil's advocate here. Were the continuing students aware of this before the semester? to uh, change their horse came in somewhere mid-December. Mm. Around that time, they were On at vacation. home for vacation. And the first semester started somewhere in January. Mm. So, of course, you would say that some notice was given to them. As to whether that notice was, um, was, was, was enough time, or as to whether it will... December to January wasn't enough time. You didn't notify us early enough, and what that so they've not raised enough funds to go to yeah, the so that that is that is UGL one halls. that that is one argument. The university is also saying that some of them have actually um, registered and moved into this source. But regardless of whether they were notified early, whether they've moved into this hall, they've gone to court, mm. asking the court to halt the university from carrying out this decision. new decision and this new policy for the uh, res this new residential policy. As part of it, you sought an interlocutory injunction which has been granted to you by the court. By all means, you should take steps to make sure that you get your rights as has been given by that injunction. However, that should be done lawfully. And I think that the best thing they can do if the investor is not agreeing, they should go back to the court. The court will hear them. The investor already first there was an interim injunction. Mm. The investor said A, B, C, D. Before we knew it, 10 days was over. There's an intellectual injunction. The investor is saying that it's gone for stay of execution. But this is to the investor. The investor is saying that the student should be mindful of the law. But they should also know that an application for a stay of execution it's not a state of execution in itself. Okay. So if the investor is saying that the students are acting unlawfully just because they came and they said they wanted to be in their house, mm. and the investor is also saying that we've applied for state of execution, and because of your own state application for state of execution, which is not a state of execution in itself, you also decide that you, do, you won't adhere to
of both parties not going according to the law. And I think that a bit more dialogue and understanding will it's solve, will solve yeah. this. Yeah. A bit more dialogue and understanding will solve this than the entrained positions. Of the students and the management of the institution. Uh, certainly. Yes, yes. yes. So dialogue is what I was, I was about saying that. Dialogue is very much needed in this so that at least they are there to uh, study and you are there to also teach them, manage, manage them. So in a way, you should find an amicable solution to this trouble. Let's move away from that story and take you to the Ashanti region where the National Democratic Congress Youth Organizer for the Swami constituency has been granted. The National Democratic Congress Youth Organizer for the Swami constituency, Razak Kwampa Volia, has been granted bail by the Asokwa Circuit Court in the Ashanti region. Mr. Volia is being investigated by police for inciting political violence following some statements he made in a viral video. City News' is Ashanti regional correspondent. Hafiz Tijani reports. Now, there were wild jubilations among supporters of the National Democratic Congress who had gathered at the premises of the Asqua Court Complex to witness the appearance, the second appearance of Razak Kwampa Avolia, the youth organizer of the party in the Swami constituency, who is being investigated for inciting political violence. <laughs> On the second appearance of the accused person in court, NDC supporters thronged the court premises in their numbers. Five lawyers represented the accused person on Tuesday. They prayed the court to grant bail to their client. The prosecution did not oppose the plea. The court two sureties. Evans. Thankfully, I has granted our brother Kwampa Razak bail today. And we are thankful to the judiciary and the judge for granting our brother bail and understanding the position that we're coming from. The condition is also okay that we are executing the bill at the premises or the registry of the of the court so our brother Kwampa Razak has been granted bail the court has ordered that the the prosecution serve us with their disclosures so that we can start the trial we repeated our bail application that we made the last time that the accused person surrounded himself to the police so he has shown good faith and again, he has been a youth organizer for over 12 years. And within these 12 years, there's no criminal record of him anywhere. And the police can attest to that fact. He has been a politician for that while. He has not made any pronouncement which is conducive to the breach of this nation. And for that matter, uh, the court should take all into consideration and grant him bail. And the court understood our argument and granted him bail. NDC supporters were elated following the outcome of Tuesday's ruling. NDC national and regional executives joined other party members to support Mr. Kwampa Avolia. National organizer Joseph Yamin wants NDC members to always support party for the Swami constituency. What do you have to say about this? Well, I mean, political violence and... ...body at all who seeks to do so. Or incite same. I mean, this is a matter before a court, so we will leave that to the court, court to decide whether or not what the NDC youth organizer in the Ashanti region did amounts to inciting political violence but we are not very far away from the 2024 election exactly let's cast our minds back to 2020 elections let's go to Techman south 
Central. Lukuma Central. I mean, you can list them. Ododo Dio, you can list them. But when it happens, somebody might die. Mm. And in these instances that we mentioned, people really died. Mm. Some of these people were not family. Certain people incite innocent people who are only happy about how far our politics has come mm. and who only have that sort of passion for a political I think, party. I think we, people, people go under the cover of democracy, democracy, we have right to speech and all those things. But you have to be circumspect. In yes, what you say. and, and, and that, that's you, you, should, you should be careful of the things you say in the public domain. In our political system, people are so passionate about political parties. Mm. Not that they get anything off. But they just like those political parties. Now, when we allow people who directly benefit from these political parties under the guise of anything at all, incite these innocent people who will be pushed by their emotions, only for them to go and face some form of injury or death. Well, the the court is still on the case, and we will keep you updated with what comes out of the Azoka uh, Circuit Court. So far as uh, Mr. Avolea's case is concerned. You are watching CNR Extra here on CTTV. Still to come. Ghana Post to offer discounts to the public from 14th February to the end of the month as the country celebrates World Chocolate Day. Stay with us. We'll be back with that story. Everybody, everybody, let me see. My name is Joe Metal, and I was 9 a.m. shop at the Grand Arena International Conference Center. Come, let's join together as we adore our new leadership, um, and we're trusting that God will lead them to take the church to where He intends it to be. God bless you, and see you there. There is about to be a shift, growth, and transformation as they plan to reach, rebuild, restore, reform, reposition, and rebrand the Assemblies of God Ghana. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 Where no counsel is, the people fall, but there is safety in the multitude of counselors. Come, let us welcome and celebrate our new Assemblies of God leaders. God bless you. Welcome back. Now let's bring you that exciting news from the Ghana Post Service. Celebration of Valentine's Day, or otherwise National Chocolate Day, is often characterized by deepening the experience. This courier service, Ghana Post, has announced a discount on all its... This came to light when after 100 days in office, the new managing director, Baiso Sekufo, announced a fleet of vehicles that will make their delivery service more efficient. Outlining its plans for this month of love, the nation's courier service announced a discount on all its services until the end of February. A number of celebrities, including John Dumelo, Calibos, Prince David Osei, and Bismarck the Joke, have been named ambassadors for this project. Addressing the press, the managing director of Ghana Post, Bais Osei Kufo, threw more lights on the initiative. Miles on Wheels is a program that Ghana Post launched last year. It's a period that we use to spread love. We call it spreading love or carrying 
Now, during this period, Ghana Post asking you to, uh, if you want to send something to your loved one, you should send it through them and they'll deliver it well. And they will also give you some discounts that ordinarily you wouldn't get from other courier service. Well, I think it's a good one, and at least using this I data... I think he's, he's helping the Ghana Post... Uh, you see, that, that for me, I think that organization has been dormant for some time, but he's doing well. Well, um, on the face value, we can say he's doing well. <laughs> to, to actually conclude that he's doing well, we have to go deeper into it's the right. books and see mm. what, what exactly is happening. But at least on the face value, we mm. can say that... Is bringing some attention to, to the Ghana company. Post, and we hope that it won't just be and for I February well. 14 mm -hmm. and then for the month of February, but they will come up with ways and, and branding strategies to make sure that it attracts Kenyans to use the service more. And if you look at the space, the delivery of items have modernized in a certain way. Previously, when we talk about Ghana Post, you're mm. thinking only about letters, that exactly. you're writing letter to point A or point, point B. B. And, but there's a lot more in, in that economy and in that space that Ghana Post with the right... Uh, skills ...and administrative strategies can push within them, and that can be another good... Uh, fortune for for the country well we are still in the month of love that is the month of february and you can uh, uh, just get the services of ghana post like i indicated earlier to take your uh, gift to the loved one of yours and ensure that everything is done right for your three points Philip, i didn't share how you spent your, uh, your i, gave, I, I gave my wife chocolate <laughs> i gave my wife chocolate that's how we end today's edition of cnr extra here on City TV. My name is Philip Nilati. I did this with Hansen Ajiman. Many thanks for your time and keep watching City TV.